Hello again and welcome to the third part of this uh, video series explaining how to construct and assemble my um, uh, electronic stop labels for your Hauptwerk virtual pipe organ. Now this part is going to deal with some of the aspects of assembly of the parts and components onto the stop switch, uh, sorry, <laughs> onto the stop plates. Okay, now first thing in that is to deal with these things here, which are the stop switches. Now these are readily available from a variety of sources, but you can get them from me if you would prefer it that way, or you can feel free to purchase your own. Um, now they are readily available they are 1.3 inch illuminated round stop switches with a chrome finish. This is the body of the stop switch here. And it's got a, 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 a plate plastic button, a plastic chrome effect body. And inside it, right, we have to put the components because they usually come unassembled. Now, each switch, when you get it, will comprise the following parts. A switch body, which looks like that. A micro switch and LED holder, which looks like that. A micro switch, which looks like this. Some of the micro switches will have a red and some will have a blue or black body on one side. That's the coloured side. Um, it doesn't really matter what colour it is, but remember to refer to the colour side as positive for the LED. We'll get onto that shortly. So that's the micro switch, as I said. And finally, we then have an LED. Now these are usually 12 volt LEDs with a ballast resistor inside there to make sure that the current isn't exceeded. But they'll work perfectly well with a 5 volt supply as well. And the fact that they're a 12 volt LED, usually, but you would be advised to check, but the fact that they're a 12 volt LED means that you can use the same supply for the LED and for your, uh, your, uh, uh, MIDI, encoder, your MIDI decoder uh, and encoder. Because the MIDI decoder and encoder, they both need a power supply of 12 volts, 9 to 12 volts. And the LEDs require a supply likewise. Uh, and if they're 12 volt LEDs, they will work very well with the 9 to 12 volt supply, which is also supplying your encoder and decoder. Right, let's assemble two of these and fit them to the, to the stop plate as the first part of the assembly. Now, you'll notice these micro switches here that I've got. Right, they have three three connection tabs. Some of them will only have two. Um, if they have three, just check the one you want to use will be labelled NO, normally open. It's the normally open one that you must use. Usually that's the closest one to the top connection, which is the common. Um, check by connecting a meter and pressing the little button here that you can hear clicking to ensure that you're choosing the one that's normally open. Normally open one, in case you're not familiar with these things, the normally open one will uh, show open circuit when it's just left alone like that and then it will show a closed circuit when it's pressed. Okay, so what we've got to do is to install this into the micro switch holder. Now you'll see that the micro switch has got two holes in opposite corners, a hole in, in each opposite corner. What we have to do is to fit the micro switch into this micro switch holder. And to do that, find the little switch actuator there, and that goes towards the micro switch holder, right? And find the hole, which is here, that will go into the little lug which is furthest nearest to the um, mag switch holder and you put you put the whole 
in the micro switch you put the hole onto the little lug and that's half done and then you just ease it in like this and then listen it will click when it's gone into position and it's as simple as that that's assembled part of your um, illuminated stop switch the next part is to put the LED the LED is in a holder as I mentioned with a resistor it's got two terminals there and there one of them is thinner wire and longer than the other which is a, a, a thicker wire and much shorter the one that's long and thinner is the positive and I always identify the positive by putting it in fit, fitting it into its holder uh, such that it's again it's on the side of the colored plate of the stop of the micro switch so that's where my long thin wire is and that's where my colored micro switch side is so I'm going to plug this LED into that part there in that way that orientated that way in the uh, micro switch and LED holder that's that part of the assembly done now you don't need to go any further than that at the moment but I'm just going to do the other one because I've prepared two for uh, assembly so I'm going to go over this again you find the micro switch actuator you orientate that towards the body of the holder and then your next thing is to find the lug hole that is nearest to that um, actuator and insert the lug there into it which is done and then bring it round just gently ease it in and you'll hear it click once again listen to this there now that's assembled now take your LED find the long thin wire and orientate the long thin wire so it's on the coloured side of the micro switch and then plug it in like that and it's done when you come to connect the micro switch you will now know that that's the positive because the long thin wire is the positive of the um, uh, of the LED uh, and the short thick one is the negative and uh, so that side will be positive and that side will be negative you need to know that when you come to wire it for connection to your uh, decoder right so we've prepared two what we're going to do now is just assemble these so what I'm, what I'm going to do I'm going to get a body an um, illuminated stop switch body and a collar and I'm going to put the collar onto the stop switch body you must put it the right way round if you put it the wrong way round it won't go on fully so put it the right way round so it goes fully on there it is and then put it through one of the um, round holes which are, are intended for the stop switches okay I'm going to do one that's towards the middle okay uh, so that's ready now that's ready to receive its nut there are plastic nuts here which must go over there so I'm going to um, I'm going to pop that on there There it is, and then I'm going to screw it down like that. It's finger tight at the moment. Um, I don't think you saw all of that, but um, you can see it now. What I did was I put that nut, plastic nut, over the body of the switch assembly, and now I've screwed it down so it's finger tight. What we must do next is if you look at it, and incidentally, Photographs in detail are in the construction manual. So if you don't see it all that clearly on the video, you will definitely see it in the construction manual. Now, if I hold the um, the stop the stop plate up vertically, more or less <laughs> like that, I want to put these two plastic lugs, white plastic lugs, one on each side of the body of the of the switch. I want to have that at forty five degrees, right? to the main thrust of the uh, column in which it's 
uh, mounted. So that's about 45 degrees. That's the angle you want that at. And then you need a 29 millimeter across the flats spanner, right, which I've got. And I'm now putting that on there. And then I'm just going to tighten that really tightly like that. So that one has to be connected really tightly because you're going to apply a bit of force to it when you uh, insert this component into it, but not yet. So now I'm taking the second switch body and uh, I'm going to find the collar of it, which is here. And I'm going to put the collar on there and I'm going to insert that into the opposite side uh, and I'm going to turn it roughly to 45 degrees and then I'm going to take a um, uh, take a, a, a black plastic nut, some of them are white by the way, depends where you source your components from and then I'm going to put that on there like that do it finger tightly first because you need to adjust these until they are both at 45 degrees in that kind of direction if you can see that there's the 45 degree on that one there's the 45 degree on that and then what I'm going to do is take my large box spanner again 29 millimeters across the flats you can use any old spanner that will fit right and then tighten that so it's really tight so it will never come undone okay so now what we've done is we've got the two um, stop, switch, stop, stop switch bodies fit, fitted into the uh, stop plate. You'll notice they're not, they're not horizontally in line, that's intentional. The reason for that is very straightforward. The label actually shows two labels, one for that, for that stop and one for that. So this is the top one and it's shown in the top half of the label. That's the bottom one and it's shown in the bottom half of the label. So there we are. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, show you how we, we assemble the um, uh, switch components here and the LED into the switch body here. Uh, what we do is we've got the LED inserted into the LED holder part of the assembly and we've got the micro switch fitted into the holder we put the LED into the body of the uh, um, eliminated switch and we push this gently in you heard the way it clicks into position and then you gently turn it through a very small degree like that and now it's firmly fixed Okay, you do the same with the other one and you'll notice that these um, uh, connections um, are at 45 degrees to the direction of the uh, columns of switches and, and labels. And I just finally want to just point out to you that connection there is the common of the switch terminals. That connection, the top one, is the um, uh, normally open connection. So when you press the button, as you can hear that happening, that closes the connection between those and those. That's the common. That one there will go to the encoder. That will go to the common of the encoder. I also want to show you that the LED connections, that is the live of the LED and it's the negative connection of the LED and this is the uh, common of the LEDs because I usually use common positives on my decoder so you you common all the positives of the LEDs and if you remember that one the one by the colored side of the um, of the micro switch red in this case sometimes blue but red in this case, that indicates the LED terminal which had the um, uh, thin, long wire connected to it. That one had the shorter, thicker wire connected to it. 
Okay, thank you. Right, what you have to do is fit all 60 of those stop illuminated stop switch bodies into their holes. And like they say on the TV programmes, I've got one here that I did earlier. And here it is. This is, as you can see, it is a fully assembled, well it's nearly fully assembled actually, uh, stop, uh, uh, stop plate. Okay, and what I'd like you to note is that there are 60 of these stop switches here, 60 of them. Also, uh, down the uh, inner and the outer columns, you can see I've got fitted behind there, the, the uh, OLEDs are fitted on their PCBs. Turning it round, you can now see that's exactly what I've done. Let me just point out the main things that you can see here. First of all, you can see the pairs of columns of illuminated stop switches, and they've all got their um, LED and uh, stop switches inserted into the bodies of the switch bodies. So the inner and the outer PCBs are actually installed already, and I'm now going to show you how to install the central one, because the technique is the same for all of them. I've got here a PCB with all of its, all of its uh, LEDs installed. I've checked it to make sure it's working, and it is. And what I'm, you're going to see what I'm going to do now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to slide the PCB up towards the top, like this. Up towards the top of its column. You can see what I'm doing. It's slowly but surely going into position. Right. There we are. I've slid the PCB with its OLEDs mounted. I've slid them, slid the PCB up to the, to the top and it's now situated between the two rows of um, two columns of, uh, of stop, eliminated stop switches. There are plenty of pictures of this process in the manual so you won't have any problem in uh, understanding what you've got to do and then what we're going to do is you can see here that on six pa three pairs six of these switch bodies I've put additional nuts uh, on the uh, on the body of the switches so that I can screw down here and I'm going to do it now there so I can screw those um, nuts, plastic nuts, down onto the PCB and that way they will hold the PCB firmly into position. So I've done that now for the bottom two. Now this, these have to be finger tight, not screwed in with the, with the box spanner. The reason for that is almost clear, I'm sure, that if we use force we are going to be likely to damage the uh, LEDs, the OLEDs, or the PCB. So we can't use force, we can only screw them down to be finger tight. I've done the bottom two. Now, I've also inserted two extra ones uh, halfway up here. So I'm now screwing those down onto the PCB. Fantastic, there we are. And then I've got two more right at the top, up here, uh, which you can see one there, and you can see just about see if I rotate it a bit, make it easier for you to see. There we are. These two now are at the top. I'm now going to turn that one. There we are until it goes down against the PCB. And when it's against the PCB, I'm just going to gently tighten it right until it's down. Now, what I've 
what I've done now, I've tightened the, tightened the second nut on those two switch bodies, a second nut onto those two, and then down at the bottom, I've tightened a second nut onto there as well. And I'm just going to check that they are tight. And they are. And now, what we've got is we've got all of our OLEDs in position and all of our switches in position on the stock plate. Now if any of them are not quite in line either to the side or up and down there's leeway sufficient to move them about, loosen the second nuts that are on the top, loosen those a little bit and you'll be able to slide them about until they're in exactly the right position. So really that's not too difficult at all is it? It just takes a bit of time, a little bit of patience and gentle persuasion of things to do to go the way you want them to go. I'm just checking that they're all secure and they are. That's good. Now um, we're going to deal uh, in the third part with connecting the components together. We've built the stock plate we're now going to connect the components together. That's the third part.